Good morning. Good morning. Today we hear the Gospel of Mark's version of the call of the first followers of Jesus. Their response to Jesus' invitation to follow him is immediate and wholehearted. This presents a challenge for us to ask ourselves if our own following of Jesus is as immediate and wholehearted as theirs. Perhaps there are some areas of our lives we have not yet surrendered to Jesus or some sense of security we prefer to hold on to rather than trusting in the Lord. During this Mass, we are once again invited by the Lord to drop our nets, that is, to leave behind everything and follow Him. Please remember to silence your cell phones so that we can worship God without distraction. Thank you. The celebrant and preacher for this Mass is Father Donald. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of Christ our Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. You look marvelous this morning. You're welcome. <laughs> Let's ask the Lord to fill us with his goodness and his presence. I confess, I confess Almighty to Almighty God and to you, my, my brothers and sisters. That I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison.
sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may be bound in good works. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness, remember me. 
because of your goodness, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your ways. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows his sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your ways. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those whipping as not whipping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Lord be with you. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. After John the Baptist had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of men and women. Then they abandoned their nets and followed Jesus. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men and followed Jesus, the Gospel of the Lord. We could call this Discipleship Sunday, or we could call this Word of God Sunday. Either way would be good. It's the third Sunday in ordinary or ordered time. And uh, it's the uh, year of St. Mark we're coming into. That's a good gospel to begin this year with. It's the simplest, basic gospel of the four gospels, the first of them. After John the Baptist had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee. 
proclaiming the gospel of God. Jesus is asking some extraordinary things of some very ordinary men and women. We see that he calls the brothers Simon, whom he's going to later name Peter, Rocky, Kephas in Arabic. And his brother Andrew, the name means manly. So he's got Rocky and he's got manly man. These are unlikely characters. There's no biblical music in the background. There's just this very blunt force question or order. Opizomu, follow me. And they do. That's all the more amazing. So then Simon and Peter and Andrew are called. Then there's the women that he calls. His mother follows after him in the role of widow and mother. She seems to be the only likely candidate in this whole group. And then comes Mary Magdalene, and they can only imagine what, what that's all about. And yet these people, in the middle of their lives, are overwhelmed by a call from someone who is not to be put off. We've had other call experiences in the scriptures. All throughout the Old Testament, people are called, sometimes by the darndest methods. We find out about one of them in the first reading from Jonah, who is an unwilling prophet. Have any of you ever seen VeggieTales? Raise your hand if you've seen VeggieTales. It's a very clever group of cartoons for little kids, one of which is named Jonah. And it tells the story of Jonah. It's a wonderful, wonderful experience seeing it. Jonah is a very sobering figure, but also a very comic figure. He gets a message from God that he's to go and preach to the Ninevites, non-Jews, ferocious people. It's like if one of you were asked to go and preach to the Nazis. And he goes and he, he preaches to them. And they all repent in sackcloth and ashes. About this time, we find out how much he despises them. He's a racist. He's against Ninevites. He doesn't trust them. He doesn't like them. He didn't want to go in the first place. And then what does God do up and do? He, he blesses them with the spirit of conversion. Even the animals put on sackcloth and ashes. Everybody in the place, in the city, is, is this big, huge city, is totally overwhelmed. And Noah, or Jonah is in the middle of the city in the square, and he's pouting. And he's saying, why was it this successful Lord? And the Lord cast a deep sleep on him. And, he's, and he, he starts to say, I'm swooning, Lord. I'm swooning from the heat of the sun on me. And this is all your fault. Fine prophet, fine Hebrew prophet, huh? So Jonah wakes up, and over his head is a bean plant with big, broad leaves that has grown up over the course of the night to protect Jonah from the sun. And Jonah still is like a little five-year-old spoiled brat. I don't like it. And the, the best line of the whole book is the last line that the, the Lord says to Jonah. Why should I not care for these Ninevites? Not to mention their many cattle. It's, it's a, a tremendous book against racism, a tremendous book about conversion, a tremendous book about being a disciple when things don't go the way we want them to go. 
how things have changed in the midst of us, and we're not always very open to it. Pope Francis has named this Sunday Word of God Sunday. Word of God Sunday. And he asks us to take the Word of God and give it an honored place in our household. The pulpit is really a, a throne for the Word of God. It's where the Word of God is delivered, it's proclaimed, and heard. So there's three parts to that. Okay? There's the Word of God proclaimed, the Word of God heard, and the word of God made concrete in our lives. How is the word of God visible in your life? Hmm. Well, first of all, there's a practical way we can do that, and that is to make sure that our, our scriptures are available to us, that they're sitting there in the middle of our our living room or our dining room or our kitchen in a place where everyone can see it so that we have to bump into it and start to read it. Why is it that Catholics have a reputation for not reading?